Hello, and welcome back to London Cycle Routes. Today, I'll be showing you how to cycle from Vauxhall in South London to Elephant and Castle. This ride takes a little over 10 minutes, and you can do the whole thing on quiet streets and protected cycle lanes. Despite being a relatively local journey, by public transport, the same trip would take around 20 minutes and could require a change of tube lines, so you can certainly save time by getting on your bike. If you find this video useful, or you just enjoy watching it, then don't forget to hit the subscribe button on YouTube, as I try to post new videos just like it every week. I'd also like to say a big thank you to everyone who supports the channel on Patreon. If you'd like to contribute as well, you can find a link in the description below the video. Okay, let's get going. So we're starting on the Vauxhall Cross Gyratory on the protected cycle lanes at the south end of Vauxhall Bridge. At peak times, this junction is absolutely rammed with people on bikes. And you can see here, even relatively early morning on the weekend, there are still a few people getting around on two wheels. If you want to do this journey by hire bike, you can see a rank of them on the right there, potentially really useful for anyone arriving at the station here by train. We turn off left here and make sure you're cautious as you cross the pavement and we go on to Godding Street, which runs along the side of the old Vauxhall Pleasure Gardens next to the railway. This street is a dead end, so it doesn't tend to have traffic on it, but some people use it for parking and there are some businesses in the arches, so you may occasionally see cars coming in or out. We want to turn right into the Pleasure Gardens and make sure you use the drop curb here onto the path. These paths are shared with pedestrians, so make sure you go relatively slowly and give everybody a wide berth so you don't make anybody uncomfortable. You can find another rank of cycle hire bikes just here, which could be useful if you're arriving at peak time at the station and the bikes at the first rank have all gone already. As we exit the park, you'll want to turn right off here into Glasshouse Walk. The name of this street is really interesting. In the 17th and early 18th century, Vauxhall was a major centre of glass manufacturing and there were works around here owned by the Duke of Buckingham, employing Venetian craftsmen as well as local workers. There's very little remnant of that, although there are other things around here that point to Vauxhall's industrial heritage. There's obviously the name Vauxhall, which lives on in the car brand, and on Black Prince Road, which we'll be crossing in a second, there's also the old Royal Dalton factory, which used to make China. It's a really elaborate building, and if you're in the area, I really recommend stopping by and just having a look, as it's pretty unique. We're not going to see it in this video, but if you want to see it, it's just on the left on this street, about 30 seconds down the road. This crossing here, by the way, would be a great candidate to turn into a joint pedestrian and cycles zebra crossing. There's already a regular zebra crossing there, and this is actually technically an old designated cycle route, so it would make sense to cater for bikes as well. I have a bit of a soft spot for this high street here on Lambeth Walk. Um, there's quite a nice variety of shops, and although it doesn't look like much at the moment because it's early and the shutters are down, there are actually a good range of services here, and it's really useful if you live nearby. The street that we're on is actually really quite quiet, and you shouldn't really have any problems cycling down here. At weekday rush hours, there can be a little bit more traffic, but actually the closure that we went to at the start of what Lambeth Walk actually keeps the street relatively quiet and removes through traffic from here. It's not part of an official low traffic neighbourhood or LTN, but it basically has the same effect by removing the useful routes for cars to rat run down here. At the moment, we're kind of running parallel to Cycleway 5, which is a route that I use in the videos a lot. Um, and this can sometimes be a nice alternative if you're bored of going down the same streets. I love this Art Deco uh, GP surgery dead ahead of us on the left there. And we're actually gonna turn off here and go into the China Walk Estate. Note this little gap in the cobbles here that lets you cycle through there without having to go over the horrible big stones. One big improvement that could be made to this route is actually adding a dropped curb here and maybe re resurfacing a it a little bit to make it better for cycles. You could then potentially add a crossing here to make crossing Kennington Road a bit easier. You can see there's already some cycle provision, but not loads. It wasn't difficult for us to cross there, but at rush hour, Kennington Road can get a little bit busy and it would be nice to have some way of getting into Brook Drive, which is a useful cycle link. Now, you may have noticed that at the entrance to Brook Drive, there was a sign saying the road is closed. You'll see further down why that is. There's actually some filming going on for something, or there was when I came down here. 
Um, these guys up here who I speak to briefly tell me to walk on the pavement um, and I actually push my bike through this section. So normally you'd just be able to cycle straight down here fine. Normally I get a little bit annoyed when weird things like this happen in videos as I like to show you the routes as they are at their best or as you can probably expect them to be on most days. But actually I found this kind of interesting. There's um, loads and loads of people out here shooting something. I'm not exactly sure what they're filming but if you look closely at the shops here you can see it says Woodchurch Dentist mini market etc the king's head a lot of these shops are fake they're not actually real shop fronts and they've long been converted into houses so they've actually put fake shop fronts up here and you can check on street view at brook drive to see how they've changed it um, i was able to get through here fine and i thought it made a nice addition to the video so i didn't reshoot it or edit it out i just left it in there's actually a lot of filming going on around South London at the moment. I had a separate encounter on another day on Rupal Road near Waterloo. And in that separate case, they had actually built a fake house across the road. So I wasn't able to complete the video, which was kind of annoying. But um, in this case, I was able to simply wheel my bike through the film set and nobody seemed to care. Interestingly, Brook Drive was actually the filming location for the music video for the famous Dexys Midnight Runners song, Come On Eileen. So you can check that out on YouTube and actually you'll find that you'll recognise the place. It's a good song and uh, quite a fun video as well. We've turned off onto Elliot's Drive here, which I think really needs a resurface. It's been dug up a lot of times since it was last properly resurfaced, as you can see. And uh, the only thing that's stopping the camera shaking and shaking is the brilliant image stabilization tech in the camera that I'm using and I'm very grateful that that exists. You wait for the traffic lights here and turn right. Don't be fooled by the uh, left turn only signs which are a little bit misleading as there's obviously a two-way cycle track here that only applies to cars is left turn only and incidentally that band turn is actually what keeps Brook Drive relatively quiet at all times. Um, you've got the London College of Communication here, UAL, so that's one particular reason why you might need to be cycling here. A lot of people I imagine will want to cycle to Elephant and Castle. This is a potentially good route to do it. And you have to wait for these lights. They can be a bit slow. Also, I made a mistake here. There's a second set of lights here to cross the road. You can see it does turn green immediately as I'm crossing, but if you want to be safe, make sure you wait for that light. Of course, when it comes to crossing the road, you can cross whenever you want to. It's not like you're running a red light on the street itself. However, I actually didn't realize that I was crossing the road at the wrong time there, which isn't ideal. And maybe that design at that crossing could do with a bit of rethinking. It would probably make sense to have both of those lights synced up together so people could just cross the whole road at once. So we're here, we made it to Elephant and Castle. Thanks very much for watching. Um, looking at that route, you can see it's pretty direct. Um, you can also see that from the timings at the beginning, we're going a lot faster than public transport there. And um, it was also a really pleasant ride, as you can tell by the video. I so said I did shoot this video on the morning of a weekend, but actually most of those streets are pretty quiet most of the time. So I really wouldn't expect it to be much worse than that at all. Make sure you hit the subscribe button and hit the bell icon as well so that you're alerted for new videos. And if you really like what we're doing on the channel, you can always sign up on the Patreon. And thank you very much to everybody who's already doing that. I would love to hear your comments on the route and uh, what you think of the suggested improvements as well, especially crossing from China Walk Estate into Brook Drive. I think that would be a really useful crossing to add in. Um, it's also next to a regular pedestrian crossing, so it wouldn't be too hard to have those synced up. Um, thank you again, and I will see you again next time.